Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk you through one last example of something that I ended up creating for a client based off of that range chart that I've been doing for the last few weeks. Now as you can see in front of us here, in this scenario I had four constant lines that needed to be shown, but one of the problems was when all of the data labels were turned on with these, due to the limitation of the fact that the labels can only be shown left, right, top, or bottom, they were starting to overlap each other and it was becoming confusing on what to show. Now, per the requirements from the client, all four constant lines needed to be shown because there were ranges that needed to be compared with each other to determine the gaps of them. So I couldn't just show one at a time. So my solution was to eventually show one label at a time being driven by a slicer selection at the top that would show the corresponding label. So that achieved what was needed and decluttered the report. So with that being said, let's hop into Power BI and get started. Looking at what we have in front of us here, uh, one last example of something that I needed where we ended up having the range bar with a bunch of different constant line values. In this case, I'm just using the average min, max, and artificial median and mean. They're just representing multiple constant lines that needed to be shown in a visual. And the issue that I was running into, we don't have a lot of customization of where to place these data labels specifically. We either have left, right, top, or bottom. And when all of them turned on, they started to overlap each other and not really show that much. They also did need to show all the lines at the same time because the lines distance from each other did provide meaningful value. So I was first thinking maybe a slicer that could just simply drive showing one line at a time. But again, one of the restrictions was that all the lines needed to show because they had a, had a benefit of comparing with each other. So my solution for this was to show the lines, color them different colors, but have the slicer drive the label that's showing. So in this case, right now the average min is showing. If I select max, it puts it over to there or the median or mean. So this will make sure that the label that's showing is gonna be left aligned top to the line it is representing. So we can change the label, but still reduce the clutter, but also show the four lines at the same time. So this is what I wanna walk you through in terms of what was accomplished with this. Now, the first thing that I'll mention is that there is a special measure driving the label here. Now, I did need to use a disconnected table and a switch measure to use this because today, at least, we do have a limitation where if we were to add a reference line, we cannot use the F of X button to add a field parameter to that. That would have been my first recommendation if that existed. So this simply coming over to my table view, I just have and I still call it a parameter, but it's just a standard table where I have the labels for min, max, median, and mean with a sort for the slicer selection. But that was created just using the enter data button. Now, coming back to this, I have a special measure called label selection, where I essentially just simply grab the value being returned from the slicer selection, and it just returns one of these four values that I have built into my model depending on which those are. Now, a little bit of the magic comes into play on the fact that I added a special reference line in here for the label. Now, I wanna show you a little bit of a headache and some workarounds for this. So to add this in, if we're gonna to go to the label, let's go ahead and delete that for now. So I'm gonna add a line for label. Let's rename this to label. There we are. Now, one thing I'm gonna do with this is choose the type constant line. Now, the interface is a little buggy, I feel. Notice that it put me on the median as soon as I change the type, so I have to reselect it just to keep context in place. Now, what I want to do is I want to show only the label but not the line. Another issue or bug, I'd say, is if you turn the line off, it actually deletes it as a constant line. So again, caveats to be aware of. So we're going to go to add line again, and all the, other, all the others have already been added but without the data label showing. So this is a fifth line just to show the label. Add line, we're going to again rename this to label. I'm gonna change the type to constant line. I need to reselect it because it reorders the stuff now. Use the F of X button. We're gonna to go to metrics, label selection, select okay. And now let's go ahead and it uh, doesn't even really matter what the color is, just we're gonna turn the line off entirely. That's just gonna simply be disabled because the line doesn't need to show, but I want the label to show. So that, and whatever position is best for you, I just simply want to show the data value and I'm going to color this black. 
Now, it would be nice in a perfect world to show both, but again, the name of the label is going to come from the, uh, from the name of the measure, or better said, whatever I have here. So that can't be dynamic, at least as of today. So that's why I'm only going to show the data value. And now, with all of those configured, the line is basically hidden, the label is showing, and then the measure will be driven by the slicer selection, and then the name will be implied by whatever you have onto that, and ensuring also that you have single select turned on so they can't unselect anything. But this now will then drive that label showing. So you have a total of five constant lines with one of them essentially just being the label showing with any of these associated below. So it was something that, given the confines of what was required in the visual creation that I had, this service the need of simplifying the visual, preventing label overlaps, but still giving the client the end result that they needed in terms of the uh, functionality and usability that they wanted, but decluttering it up without too many labels. So hopefully it's something you can find useful or maybe take some inspiration from, from some of your own charts to how, uh, for how to maybe conditionally drive data labeling to a degree with measure selection. But as always, drop any comments, suggestions, or anything else down into the chat below. I always look for any inspiration for additional videos as well. And check out some of my related content here in the upper left. And as always, liking, commenting, subscribing, tweeting, um, sending by OWL, any other ways to share this information will continue to help my channel grow, of course. So with that being said, I will see you in my next video.